Next, I want to intro, you know, one another founding supporter of our work, um, someone uh, representing the University of Kentucky who has consistently, as an organization, been committed to SOAR and also to implementing strategies that align with our strategies and doing great work around that. Uh, but also somebody that uh, about three years ago, uh, the University of Kentucky held a board of trustees meeting in Hazard, Kentucky, and I had the opportunity to present to one of the board committees. And uh, in that meeting, uh, in that same day, I had the opportunity to have dinner with President Eli Capaluto. And uh, for me, that was an incredible experience, uh, you know, growing up. Go Big Blue, all right? Sayersville, Eastern Kentucky, Go Big Blue, right? Uh, and me just watching and seeing the university and then it's just any point in my life to have the opportunity to sit down and have dinner with the president was a great experience. He's been somebody that's been uh, not only a personal champion for our work, uh, but really a, 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 a personal supporter, someone who's every time I've bumped into him, he spoke words of encouragement. Uh, take a lesson from that. Uh, that's a tremendous leadership quality is just to share and pour into other people. Uh, I don't get to be around him that often. I'm sure his team would say the same, but I can say from my perspective, uh, he is a, he's a fantastic leader. He's a supporter of our work, and I personally appreciate his commitment to Appalachia, Kentucky. So join me in welcoming President Eli Capaluto from the University of Kentucky. Jared, thank you, and thank you for never having too little dreams and for conceiving those things that have never been done. You also point out the importance of developing a street strategic plan and without being daunted or distracted, maintaining the determination, you have mornings like this, and I'm sure there are many more to come. Governor Bevin, again, with deep passion, talked about what is possible. He painted a portrait of what we, and it takes we, what we can do together in common purpose toward an uncommonly important goal. And Congressman Rogers continues with that prophetic voice, it's not just the words, it's the voice, to tell us what can happen. And as he said the first time I met him, eight years ago, develop the plan and work the plan. And he told us a few years ago as part of his prophecy, there is not going to be one silver bullet that'll solve all our problems. It's gonna take thousands of silver bullets and we've seen examples of that today and I just saw some in the video. So that truth is all around us, and we are proud to be a part of it. Later today, I'll be able to visit what's a stone's throw from here, that incubator where we teach former coal miners and others how to code and how we can expand 3D printing. Less than a mile from here, first time I visited eight years ago, I got introduced to the first fine arts extension program in the country, one that has been adopted by dozens of communities across the United States. And I remember that day, the play they were putting on brought people together from age nine to 90. That builds community. We have 120 of those extension offices across our state. And we're joined today, another sponsor I hope you realize is UK Healthcare, practices and partners with people across the region, and it operates under one principle and value, that no Kentuckian should have to leave home for health care, that most complex care, regardless of how sick they are. So we hope to realize dreams together. So from arts, to health care, and a lot in between, we work every day to be the university for Kentucky. So we're deeply committed to being a steadfast partner. 
We've been a long-term cornerstone supporter of SOAR, and it's no coincidence to me that we're now sharing leadership with Kim McCann as your chair. She also serves on our board of trustees. And when you think about your strategic plan and you look at our blueprint, you start seeing similarities. <clears throat> your imperatives, broadband, 21st century workforce, small business in a global economy, healthy communities, industrial development, regional food system, and tourism. All strategic priorities where UK is working, teaching, researching, and healing. Your priorities are our priorities. And this morning, Governor Bevin and Congressman Rogers pointed to the concrete progress we are making when we can invest significantly into our region. I certainly noticed on the way here the improvements in the modernizing the parkway, but there is a digital parkway in the works that will provide incredible opportunities. And through the efforts of SOAR and others, hundreds of Eastern Kentuckians are working, not at an office, but in their homes and small shops as coders and information technology specialists. It's what you have to do in the 21st century. So that's the power of physical infrastructure and investment. But I want to talk to you just a few minutes about another power, another type of investment, and that's in human infrastructure, human capacity. We know at the University of Kentucky first that even if you attend some college, your likelihood of having a higher income and a richer life improves compared to those who don't. And if you complete college, it's even more so. And we found at the University of Kentucky, too many students were ending before graduation their educational experience. Over a third of those had a B or higher average. And when we looked closely, we saw it was that financial need that was tripping them up. If we could reduce that unmet financial need, that's the difference between the cost of education grants, scholarships, and loans to less than $5,000, our students, the likelihood of graduating increases significantly. So following Do Congressman Rogers' lead, we developed a plan and we're working the plan. We call it UK Leads. And we've invested more and expanded this. We started with pilot grants. It works, so we're investing more in it. Last year, the level of unmet need at the university was the lowest it's been through since 2013. We're not done. We have some $60 million in unmet need. Students from our region in Appalachia, it totals nearly $10 million. So we want to close that gap. As part of our Kentucky Can Capital Campaign, we're going to raise $300 million to invest in student scholarships. One fourth. We welcomed our largest class in the past week, some 5,400 freshmen. One fourth of all the Kentuckians in that class come from families whose average income is $19,500. We owe our deepest commitment to them to keep those doors to a college education open, and we're committed to it. <laughs> Second, along with your sort of digital expansion here, I'm proud to say that our campus is one of three in the country, Johns Hopkins and Ohio State University, the other two, that were chosen by Apple to be a smart campus. Well, we want to empower our students. We were thinking about a pilot program. Part of this provides every student an, an Apple iPad, 
through tough savings and efficiencies, we made it possible that every student has one. And those students are already in those design labs on campus and in Cupertino learning how to program and develop apps to improve student success. So that's our efforts and it's just begun, just beginning. And the skills you can develop there will take you through a lifetime. And finally, finally something that I know touches everyone here today. It touches us at the University of Kentucky and all of us have a loved one, a relative, or a friend who's been devastated by the scourge of substance abuse. It is not a disease, it is a disease, it's not a failure of character. More than 47,000 Americans died and unfortunately Kentucky is in the top five of all the states. But I applaud Governor Bevin, Congressman Rogers. Their leadership is making a difference. I attended Congressman Rogers' drug summit several years ago. There weren't that many people there. There are thousands there now. He's hailed as the Paul Revere, that our country should have listened to him early, and we wouldn't have the problems that we do today. But because of his efforts in Congress and those of our delegation, monies have been made available to support our research efforts and entities and effective organizations like UNITE. And Governor Bevin has thrown the full weight of his administration behind our efforts. Last year, in response to a call for proposals by the National Institutes of Health, we had 20 faculty from six colleges who worked around the clock for 90 days to produce a 600-page plan to reduce opioid deaths in Kentucky by 40% in three years. We could not have done it without key members of his cabinet and his cabinets coming together in partnership with us. And Governor, he also came to the site visit. And when you get to the site visit stage, you're in the finalist group. And it makes a difference when your governor shows up and gives a compelling message and makes a sincere, deep commitment to deliver on our pledge to reduce opioid deaths by 40% in three years. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Congressman Rodgers. So we are awarded that $90 million grant, and it opens the pipelines for more, and we're going to turn this around. In closing, I often reflect, how do we do all this? How do we tackle it? How do you do it? How do we do it? I was glad when I walked in today and saw in some of your signage that you refer to your faith and grit. At the University of Kentucky, I believe we can be more, do more, achieve more if we rely on something that we have found is a difference maker for us. And we call it our grit and our grace. And by our grit, I mean that drive to succeed. We have to grow comfortable with being knocked down, but more confident about getting up. By our grace, it's how we treat and support one another on that road to success. It's our generosity of goodness towards one another. It's being diverse without being divisive. And it's being self-reliant without being selfish. Those are the things that make a difference and we share. And those cannot be inherited or gifted or programmed. Those we have to earn together. We look forward to being your partner in earning our way forward for a brighter day in Eastern Kentucky and all of Kentucky. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being our partners.